Welcome to the Worshipped Woman Podcast. I am your host, Kelly Kristen. I am a life and relationship coach, deep healing facilitator, and subconscious change expert. On this podcast, we will dive deep into personal growth, transformation, and relationships, releasing patterns of toxicity, codependency, and people-pleasing as we explore what it means to be the worshipped woman. If you are ready to heal, embody your worth, and raise your standards in life and love, you are in the right place. I am so happy to have you here. Now, let's get started. Hello, sisters. Welcome back to the Worshipped Woman podcast. Kelly Kristen here, and I'm so excited that you are hanging out with me today, and I am extra, extra, extra excited because if you're listening to this uh, when it comes out, which is Monday, June 13th, this is the day that I am reopening enrollment for Heal, Rise, Thrive. Heal, Rise, Thrive is my group program for women that are ready to heal from toxic relationships, rise into their personal power, and become a woman who thrives. It is literally my favorite thing to take women through this program because it is unlike any other online program. It is not just a course that you take. It is an experience and you actually work really closely with me. It is group coaching. So it's not like you're just some other number there. It's very limited spacing. Um, And the group that forms with all of the love and the transformation that takes place within this program is truly exceptional. It blows my mind um, what can happen in just eight weeks. And now this round is going to be um, having an extra call in the end. So it's actually going to be 10 weeks in total because I even wanted to add an extra call for further integration at the end. So I'm super, super excited. Uh, This program is literally everything that I have learned over eight years of study, healing healing work, um, everything that I've been doing with clients for the past almost five years now, it is all in this program. It takes the complete guesswork out of healing from toxic relationships. It takes the guesswork out of if I'm ever going to find a a healthy partner, if I'm worthy of that. It takes all of the anxiety and all of the questions and the shame and the guilt and everything that you feel after being in toxic relationships. We can get rid of that and you can live a truly incredible life with the love that you want, but feeling complete and whole and at peace with yourself. And that is the absolute best, best part. So if you are at all interested in that, I will put the, the link in the show notes for you check it out. It is only going to be open until the 17th. So you have a short window to check it out and come into the program. And again, the spaces are limited. So I do not know when it will fill up and when you are going to be hearing this. But if you are at all having an inclination, click the link, you'll get all of the information there. And then of course, if you have any questions about it, you can contact me and there's contact information on the page as well as you can always find me on my Instagram, Miss Kelly Kristen. And today... I'm actually speaking to Hannah, who was in the last round of Heal, Rise, Thrive, and I am so grateful that she wanted to come on the podcast and share her story with you. Even if you say, you know what, I can't do the program for whatever reason, I don't want to do the program for whatever reason, but you are somebody who is maybe harboring some of the shame or guilt or somebody who is really thinking that you have to perform for love or that you have to be a certain way to be loved, you're going to want to listen to today's episode because Hannah's transformation through that is absolutely incredible. And I'm so grateful that she is able to share this with you. You know, she's just a regular person and you'll even hear her say, I've never done anything like this before. This is totally out of my comfort zone to come on a podcast and talk about myself like this. But she wanted to because she wanted to take her experience and share it with you because it was that impactful for her. And I'm so, so grateful to be able to share this with you. So without any further ado, here is Hannah. All right, ladies, welcome back to the Worshipped Woman podcast. And I am so excited to be sitting here with the beautiful, amazing Hannah. And she was um, in the last round of the Heal, Rise, Thrive program. And I am so excited for you all to be able to hear her story, what her journey has been like. 
And I am sure there are going to be so many things that you can relate to in here. So Hannah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I am so thrilled and overjoyed to be part of be part of this and continuing my experience and my journey. Uh, this is so far out of my comfort zone. I have never done anything like this, which is pretty on brand for my whole experience uh, from start to finish. This has been uh, just something that's really pushed my boundaries in a, in a really beautiful and productive way. So I am, thank you for having me, Kelly. I'm so glad to be here. And I love that so much. And thank you for being honest about that, because I think, um, you know, part of this work that we do in Heal, Rise, Thrive really does require a certain level of just trust the process, right? <laughs> because yeah. a lot of the, a lot of the concepts and things that I'm talking about are, you know, they're ex experiential. They're not, you know, very concrete. I'm like, oh, we're going to move this through your body and we're going to do this. And you have to sit there and just go, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And it was all so new to me. I mean, there, I learned a whole new vocabulary and like way of thinking through things that was just so foreign to me, but in the best way. I mean, I had done, I, you know, I thought I had done so much. I had tried all of these kind of ways that you, you find easily. Um, but you know, this was a whole new way of thinking about it and approaching it. And it's really, I think what made it successful for me. Awesome. So we're going to get into that, but first I want to back up a little bit and really uh, what was your process of coming into the Heal Rise Dive program? What brought you there? Um, what, what was your relationships like? Yeah. So I found you and Heal Rise Thrive uh, at the end of a really sort of horrible situation. Uh, I was in not my first toxic relationship with someone who, you know, was pretty verbally and emotionally abusive. Um, and I lived on the West Coast, which is about 3,000 miles from any support system that I had. Uh, and I, I left. I left without much planning and without uh, much conversation because it's just what I needed to do. And so in the aftermath of that, uh, I was just sort of reeling. I was trying to figure out what had happened and how you know, my mindset was, how had I let this happen? How had I failed? Um, and I'm a very context driven person. So I'm, you know, just scrolling and Googling and falling into the, the hole that is the internet. Um, and, you know, as luck would have it, I'm, you know, 500 saved Instagrams of, you know, what's a narcissist and how do you fall prey to one? Uh, and I just happened to see something that you had shared. Uh, and it was about uh, Heal, Rise, Thrive. I was like, damn, that resonates. This is, I am, I am collecting information about someone who's no longer in my life. Mm -hmm. Why am I doing that? Um, and so I spent a little time with, with your content and it, it just, it spoke to me. Uh, and then we had that first phone call and away we went. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah. Everybody that listens to this podcast knows I'm like, we need to get off the, just getting information about somebody else train and let's get down into what's actually going on within you, because that's <laughs> what freaking matters. And I yes. like, I drill that so much. And it's so funny, the, actually the amount of pushback that I get from people on that. I always think it's funny because when I say it, I don't think it's controversial at all. Right. I'm just like, it seems very obvious to me that if you spend like years of your life devoted to learning everything you can about narcissism and narcissism and that you're not really going to get very far in your own healing journey. But man, I'll tell you, I get a whole lot of pushback about that. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad that I could bring you to the light. Yes. I could bring yes. you to the light. <laughs> and so you were in a space of coming out of the relationship and really like there was a whole lot of blame there, right? Like self-blame. And so I would love to even like coming through that for you, I think was probably one of the, the biggest things that I saw shift for you mm -hmm. throughout it. So I would love for you to talk about just even like the mindset of where you were in the beginning mm -hmm. and how you were like able to work through that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, prior to doing this work, really defined my worth on other people's opinion of me. Um, and I, you know, looking back, a lot of my relationships were incredibly performative, right? I wasn't myself because I 
knew that to be loved and to be worthy, I needed someone else to validate me. And I needed someone else to say, oh, well, you're worthy. So this is how, like, this is how you, you earn your space in the world. And so I, um, it, it was difficult to kind of work through that because so much of who I am depended on others. Um, but our turning point in, in the program was really, uh, and it's something I tell myself every day, I couldn't have done better than I knew how to do. Yeah. And so I, you know, everything that went wrong, I would say, well, what did I do? Why did I do it this way? What is wrong with me? Well, what was wrong with me was that was the only way I knew how to survive. And you taught me that every day and every action is just what I know to keep myself feeling safe. And so that really just lifted all of this guilt and shame right off my shoulders because it was like, well, shoot, I'm doing the best I can. And now that I know better, I get to do better, Um, which was really that turning point for me. Yeah. And gosh, it's something that's so simple, right? It's It sounds really simple, but it's hard to get like too. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a difference too of even hearing that and then having the felt sense through it. Right. Because there was even a couple of times that, you know, it's like you knew that, but you were still having the tendency to hold on and still having the tendency because it's it's not like we've been one way for however many years of our life. We're going to hear one thing and go, oh, <laughs> that's it. Everything's different. Everything has the potential to be different from that moment, but you actually have to start embodying it. Right. And so I think that there was, you know, even that process for you was pretty was pretty deep with Mm -hmm. how how you actually embodied that. So I'd love if you have any insights into even that part. Absolutely. So I am the kind of person who my my physical reactions to my emotions have always been present Uh, in the sort of height of my most recent relationship. uh, I lost all my weight. I lost a ton of hair. I was sick all the time. Um, so it was it was a very physical embodiment of that guilt and shame that I just kept trying to put on myself. Uh, and there were exercises that we did throughout Heal, Rise, Thrive that, again, were so new to me. It was such a new way to think about it. But when we learn and understand that these traumas and these lessons are, are trapped, they're physically manifested in our body, and there are ways that we can move through it. I, you know, that was a game changer for me. It's something that, you know, healing is not linear, right? So we have right. to give ourselves this grace all the time. So not every day is awesome. To me. Just the other day, I was like, shit, what have I done? I have backslid so far. And then I said, no, Anna, you know how to work through this. You know how to move through your emotions. Um, and that, that was, was and will continue to be game changing for me. Yeah. And I love that. I love that because, you know, and that's the thing too. And what I think made you successful through the program and what I know made you successful even is the, the willingness, right? Because it's, there's two different people that can come come into the program. One is, oh man, you know, I hope this works. I hope this fixes me, you know, and acting like you don't really have the own, your own responsibility to that process. Or there is the person that shows up and says, I am so willing to never feel the way that I felt before. And I am so ready to do whatever it takes. And that's really the approach that you came in with, right? And I'd love for you to like talk about how that mindset was for you, because I think before any of the work gets to be done, it has to be that mindset of like, this absolutely is not my life anymore. Right. Yeah. It's so you know, I remember sitting, I hadn't, I didn't even know where I lived yet. Right. I had nowhere else, to, nowhere to go. I mean, I had places, but I had no house of my own. So I'm sitting at my friend's house at her kitchen table, looking at, you know, our calendar to talk. And I was like, this is it. Anna. It is that you've got to get your shit together. You've got to do something because you can't do this anymore. So much of yourself and your life and your friendships and your family relationships has suffered And it's time to figure out how to be you and how to love being you. And, you know, that, that was kind of my objective. I, I, I had to do it. And when you get to that point, you realize you're worth the investment and 
your, your world is worth the investment. It, there's no other option. And I think it was, I mean, again, this is not my thing. Sharing in groups is not my thing. Um, <laughs> but it was because I came to a, a, you know, a virtual table with ladies who understood and held so much space for me and, and let me get there when I could. And I think that was just so pivotal in, in being able to just embrace the unknown of all of it. Yeah. And I think that's such an important point is when you have the community that understands you and can really hold that space for you. And there's just so much love. Like every, I mean, every time I'm so blown away. I mean, I get so emotional just thinking about like all of the groups that come together and how much love there is for everybody because there's something so special, I think, particularly about women coming together that have been through this experience because I just think that women who have been in toxic relationships are actually the most loving people on the planet. <laughs> yes. yes. Like they have so much love to give. It's just been totally misdirected. So <laughs> it's like, well, we can actually get that to a space where we're give, we're having that healthy container for it. And, and you actually start to feel what healthy love feels like really from the other women in the group, which I think is such a special part. Like I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. I, I, seriously, <laughs> me too. And it's, you know, you, you said it for there's, you feel your first taste of like just free unconditional love and acceptance with the group. And, you know, I, re, I, I wrote several times, like Hannah, sh just show up. They want you there. Show up and be present and share yourself. You don't have to perform. And when I finally started to get there and the, the group was, they, it, they just welcomed it, right? They were so ready, which meant me be so ready. And then it, I remember we did a, the self-love shower exercise, right? Yeah. Which was hands down the most incredible experience that I've ever had in terms of self-acceptance and self-celebration. And I could only look at myself and say that I loved me because I had had a group unconditionally love me without even knowing me, yeah. which is pretty remarkable. Wow. That is so beautiful. You're going to make me cry right now. Like <laughs> what is happening? I'm getting so emotional. Okay. That's so beautiful. I love that so much. Yeah. Because it's so important, mm -hmm. you know, and I want people to understand that even when you think that you're messy and you know you have all of these issues and all of these things and you're emotional and you're this we're gonna love you like through that you can show up any way you want and it Absolutely. is it's such a magic experience and I feel like every person on the planet deserves to feel that that you can come exactly as you are and no one's gonna tell you you're wrong no one's gonna mm -hmm. tell you to stop no one's gonna tell you to calm down we're just gonna go it's okay okay and if you do do something where you come to the group and you're like here's this thing. I don't feel awesome about what I did. He said, we get it right. It's okay. Cause again, it's not linear. And so you give, because others are giving you grace, you learn to give it to yourself too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a beautiful reflection. Thank you so much for sharing that. I would love for you to share too, like this, this relationship that brought you here wasn't the first kind of relationship like that for you either. Right. So how, how had your relationships been in the past? Were they similar? Was it like the same kind of, you know, same guy, different face? Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting because it, yes and no. Right. So, um, I have always been particularly drawn to people who are you know, emotionally unavailable, A, but who also really expect me to prove my worth to them, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody can look at me and say, well, here's all your flaws, fix them. I'm in, like a moth to the flame prior mm -hmm. to this work. And so, you know, my first really awful relationship was, had, hit, it hit, checked all the boxes of, of abuse and just really sort of, um, unfortunate circumstances. And I, I'm grateful and have always really prided myself on being able to have walked away from that relationship. Uh, and I told myself the story that you know, I had healed, right? I had walked away. I had done all of this wonderful stuff. Look at me go, which is true, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't do anything else after that, right? 
Um, so I sort of told myself I had moved on. Uh, and then very, very luckily, I dated a lovely human who he, he was so kind and accepted me and really helped bring me out of that really bad relationship. Um, but he was emotionally unavailable, which I loved because I didn't have to be emotionally available. Right. I wasn't really ready for, right? Because I hadn't done the work. And, uh, and for very healthy reasons, that, that relationship fell apart. Um, but because I hadn't, hadn't addressed the things I had learned from that first, first relationship, I found myself in my most recent one. Um, and again, same thing. It, it was, here's all the things that are wrong with you. I'm going to remind you of that every day. I'm going to manipulate and control you. And it just gave me more and more things to try to attain and fix in myself. Right. And so, you know, again, I'm a context driven person. So even in the height of that, I'm you know, Googling, how can I fix this? Um, and I even, I mean, I went and saw, you know, kind of traditional talk therapy. Um, and, and it didn't sit well with me that the problem seemed to always be me, right? Oh, well, you're a codependent. Here's a book. Oh, well, you're this or you're that. And I was like, well, hold on. What do I, how do I move through this in a way? And that Mm. was a year into the relationship. I stayed for two and a half more, um, which is just, you know, just perpetually trying to change the narrative and prove myself. Right. It's important what you just said, because I do think oftentimes women that get stuck in this toxic relationship trap really are very, um, you know, there are people that a lot oftentimes are really into like, well, no, I want to be better and I want to do this better. So, you know, if you tell me that this is my fault or my problem, well, let me look at myself and see. And we do this out of love and, you know, not understanding boundaries and not understanding Mm -hmm. these kind of relationship dynamics, of course, but it's really meant from a place of, okay, I want to be better, you know? And I do think this is why it's so important to, you know, if you're going to work with a therapist, like, great. If you're going to work with a coach, great, but they need to deeply understand these dynamics because if they don't, then you do end up in a, at a spot, like where you were talking about where you're walking away from therapy thinking, oh, I've got all this more work to do. And it's just me, 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 me. Uh, and I think that that's actually a, a big problem. Agree. And so I would love to know from you, I guess, having had that experience through the therapy and then through like the work we do in Heal, Rise, Thrive, what you feel like was the biggest difference for you through that? Absolutely. It was, it was that I had a better understanding that was beyond just, oh, well, it's a thing I need to fix. We took the time to, to go clear back to our childhood, right? And understand that there's a whole system of of experiences that have caused us to know that our choices and our behaviors today are what we've learned to keep us safe. The difference for me was that it gave me a greater understanding of the world in which I was working, my own space, right? And instead of just saying, well, you're codependent, here's a book, learn how to, you know, learn what this means. Here's another definition. We took the time to look back again, at our childhoods, at lessons we have learned throughout life and acknowledge and accept them, right? I think that's something that you really taught me how to do and this program really showed me is I can accept and acknowledge things and not judge myself and use it as a tool to grow. And so we took those moments in Heal, Rise, Thrive and we coupled them with physical actions that we can take to move forward. There's you at the end of each session, uh, you know, weekly moments that we had together, I walked away with something I could do. There's something that I can do when I'm feeling dysregulated or triggered or just generally uncomfortable. I have an action. I have something that allows me to say, oh, I can feel it down here or I can feel it in my heart or my throat. Let's move through it. Yeah. So it was that actionable item, I think, that really made it a much more beneficial program for me. Yeah. Oftentimes when we don't incorporate the body, which is such an important part of healing, it's like we can know something. Oh, I'm feeling this way. Okay. But what what do I do with that? 
feeling, right? right? Right. And I love to be able to give you all the tools to really be like, okay, yes, one, it is okay that you're feeling this way. Absolutely nothing wrong with feeling any type of way. And we can move through it. And you don't have to sit in your sadness. You don't have to sit in your anger. You don't have to sit in self-blame. You don't have to sit in all of these places that I think people become really, really accustomed to um, Mm -hmm. just out of habit essentially, right? Like the blame that you experienced, the self-blame, the guilt, that was a habit, right? Like it's not even, it's not even you. (laughs) No. And it does. And now today it makes no sense, right? (laughs) I look back on it and I'm like, what? Damn, Hannah, like (laughs) what was you doing? But it makes no sense because I, we took the time to understand why I did and why I felt that was something that I should be doing. So when we could accept it and acknowledge it, then I, I had, I had something real to work on yeah, and to pay attention to. So as you are sitting there today, I would love for you to talk about, I guess, essentially where, where you feel now having ended the program and, you know, a few months ago, right? So it's like, we, we, you've done the work you've grounded it in. And now I'd love for you to talk about what, what it's like for you now, how you're feeling now. You know, I think that I started this program with you because I knew my romantic relationships were affecting my life in a not so great way. Um, What I did not expect to walk away from this program with is an entirely new approach and perspective to all facets of my life. Uh, I think, you know, yes, I, I feel confident that when I am ready, I will approach romantic relationships, um, from a much more healed and understanding place. Um, but it has impacted how I approach everything. And I think I, I can give myself grace and I can now give others grace. And that creates this beautiful space between people. And also knowing that I can give you grace, but also not give you space in my life. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> I was not good. At that. I was not good at it. I thought, well, if I understand, if I can, you know, air quote, understand you, I should let you stick around. No, I can understand and I can accept. It doesn't mean you got to stick around, which has changed every relationship of mine. Because now I walk into them thinking, I am here and you get to be here because I choose. I choose yes. to stay in my life and I can say no. And I can say no with love. And that, that has been just, it has shifted everything. I, I told, I just had, I have a new job. I have a beautiful new home. I have wonderful friendships and relationships with my family. And that's not to say those things wouldn't have happened, but now I let them happen and I trust it right? I trust that any of these things are going to come into my life. And if they're good, great. And if they turn out to not be, that's okay too. Uh, which is not, it, not a space I operated from before. Right. And what I'm hearing is the, the trust in yourself is back. Yes. Yes. I don't know that I ever, I don't know if it's back. I finally <laughs> It's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these relationships, they affect every part of your life right? Like when you have a partner who is making you feel the ways that you felt and you feel like you have to show up like that and you're sick and you're physically not well. And I mean, it affects your job, all of your friendships, the relationship with your family, every single thing that you do, which is why I'm so passionate about this work. And I want people to understand, like, you do not have to live like that. You don't have to experience your relationships that way. And you can have an incredible life where what I love too, is that the it's like the universe, the possibilities of the universe start to open. Yeah. It's, um, it's been pretty remarkable to watch the ripple effect. Um, and I, you know, I I point to my family because that my last relationship was really bad for them too. Uh, and again, I was 3000 miles away. They couldn't be there. All they were seeing, you know, was what I was sharing across the screen. And um, in the work that I've gotten to do through Heal, Rise, Thrive and with you, Kelly, is 
it has transformed how they get to see me, which has transformed how they get to engage with me, which in turn, I've seen change how they've engaged with each other. And Mm -hmm. so it's just become this really beautiful kind of sphere that we've, we've gotten to, to grow into all because, and I, because I made a choice to stop bringing shit to the table and, (laughs) and really, you know, let things be healthy and good. Yeah. I love that. You know, there's that saying that when a woman heals, the whole world heals Mm -hmm. because we are so powerful. Our energy really is so powerful. And when you shift and change how you're approaching the people in your life and the situations, it does change everything. Mm -hmm. It changes everything and it can make everything more beautiful and more loving. Like that is the power of women. And I, I so love that this has been your experience. I love you where you are. Like, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I would love to know if there is anything else that you might want to tell somebody who is like considering the program or anything that you want to share. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Make the call. Do it now. You will be so proud of yourself for just doing the damn thing, right? Putting yourself first, making your yourself and your, your self-love and, and beauty and grace, a priority in your life, make space for that. Uh, and you won't regret it. I mean, like I said, this has changed every aspect of my life, every aspect, every facet of my life is better because of the work that I learned how to do. And I'm continuing to do, um, which I think is an important thing, right? This isn't it doesn't end at eight weeks. So you're, you feel like a whole new person. It, it's, you're now equipped to keep growing, which is, I think what I have loved even maybe even more, right. Is that I now feel so connected and the strength and love I felt from the group has just carried with me through everything. And I, I don't think I'll ever lose it. Uh, so this is, this is something that I would recommend to anyone and everyone who has any kind of relationship because you are a better person on the other side of it. And yeah, do it for you, do it for future you and do it for everyone you love. This is, this is game changing. Thank you so much, Hannah. And, you know, I so loved having you in the program, your energy. I will say one of the things that I miss the most, like when the sessions end, I'm like, Oh no, I'm not seeing them every week. (laughs) And, and, you know, I, but I do love, you know, getting the messages from people as like, Hey, like, you know, they share like a good thing that happened in their life. I'm like, Oh my God. And the love does carry on. You know, there's so much love. There's an abundance of beautiful, sweet love in this world. And it's so beautiful that you now get to carry those codes within you in a way that you didn't before. And I'm so grateful that um, we got to spend that time together. I'm so grateful that you trusted the process. <laughs> um, I know sometimes it, it, it's funny because some of the things that we go t- through, I know that everyone's like, what, what is this? <laughs> what does Kelly have us doing right now? You know, but it's like, if you just trust it and you go for it and you're willing and you're open, it just can have such a beautiful, beautiful result. And like you said, you have to carry it on. Mm -hmm. And I like to be really clear to everybody with that. It's like, I'm giving you these tools for you to carry them on. Not so you can just do this one time and think that your life is going to be great, but so that you can feel how this feels in your body and know that you have the ability to access that at any time that never goes away. And I want to thank you, Hannah, for trusting me, um, for showing up so beautifully and vulnerably. I'm sending you so much love right now. And uh, ladies, thank you so much for listening to this. This is going to be the end of the podcast for the day. If you know another sister that needs to hear this message, you think that she would get something out of it, I ask that you please, please share it. I love you guys so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.